All right, in this video, I want to talk about multiplying. Um, and dividing fractions. And actually, multiplying and dividing with fractions are the easier operations. Adding and subtracting tend to be a little bit tougher. Um, but for multiplying and dividing, they're pretty straightforward. So for multiplying fractions, we'll start there. Basically, all you need to do is you can multiply straight across then simplify to lowest terms. Okay, so that's the most basic way to multiply. Multiply straight across and simplify to lowest terms. So for instance, let's say I have something like 3 fourths times 5 6. If I go straight across, I have 3 times 5 in the numerator, which is 15. And then I have 4 times 6 in the denominator, which is 20. And now I can go ahead and simplify. So at this point, you can use any strategy you want to simplify. Um, this one's pretty low numbers. So I do recognize that both of these are divisible by 3. So 15 divided by 3 is 5, and 24 divided by 3 is 8. Now, I'm not using prime factorization here, so I am going to double check, make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, 5 and 8 have no factors in common, right? 5 is just 5. And eight is just uh, four times two, and four is two times two. So all the prime factors, there are twos. So this is going to be my final answer. Negative 2 thirds times negative 1 fourth. Now, we know our rules for negatives. Uh, when we multiply, right? A negative times a negative is a positive. That's still true here, even with fractions. So you have to start combining your negative rules with other numbers besides just whole numbers. So negative times a negative is a positive. So I know that's going to cancel out. And then I multiply straight across. So two times one is two. Three times four is 12. And then again, I do recognize these are pretty small numbers. So I can kind of see my factors a little bit easier. Two divided by two is one. 12 divided by 2 is 6. I don't see any more factors in common. Now, just be careful. If a 1 is in the numerator, you can't cancel this out. This is not the answer of 6. So 1 over 6 is 1 over 6. Let's bring in some variables now. And notice I do have an improper fraction here as well, eight over five. Improper fractions, it doesn't make a difference. It's still the same strategy. So I'm gonna multiply straight across. So I have three X times eight. And then here I have four times five X squared. Now I'm gonna go ahead and multiply out first. So three times eight is 24. And then I have an X. And then four times five is 20. And I have an X squared. Now, this one I'm feeling a little bit more, you know, maybe stressed about. It's a little bit more complicated. So if you need to go back to doing those prime factors, you can. So maybe I go to my 24 and I break this down. It's 4 times 6. And then 2 times 2 and 2 times 3. And then that x is just 1x here. And then for 20, notice again I have an improper fraction. That's totally fine. Uh, let's see, I have 4 times 5. And then 2 times 2. And then x squared means I have two x's. So 1, 2. Now I cancel. So I have a pair of 2's here, another pair of 2's. I don't see anything else to cancel here. And I do have one x I can cancel. So what I have left in the numerator is I have a 2 times 3. And then I have a 5 times x. So my final answer here is 2 times 3 is 6, and 5 times x is just 5x. Okay. Now, my final answer has an improper fraction, and that's totally fine. 
Um, it's nothing to really worry about if you have an improper fraction. If the question wants you to convert over to a mixed number, then that would be okay too. So you can do that as well. Uh, let's do an example with mixed numbers. So let's say I have negative two and one fourth times five and two thirds. Now, if you're multiplying, you want to convert to improper fractions. And this is actually really important. I don't have an easy way for you to multiply with mixed numbers. It is not two times five and one fourth times two thirds. That does not work. So my answer is not like 10 and two over 12 here. It doesn't work that way. You have to convert over to improper fractions when you're multiplying. So I have the two times the four, and then I add that to the one. So I have eight plus one is nine. So this becomes negative nine fourths. And then here, three times five is 15, plus two is 17. So this becomes 17 thirds. So now that we have our mixed numbers converted to improper fractions, we can just multiply the same way. So I can go straight across here. Um, now I do have to do a little bit of work because I don't know nine times 17 off the top of my head. So I'm just gonna do my multiplication off to the side. And then four times three is 12 here. And be careful, negative times a positive is gonna stay negative. Now at this point, I do have to do some simplifying. Um, this one's a hard one. So you really kind of wanna think about, okay, what factors are in common? Um, or maybe try to do a factor tree here. So if I do my factor tree, I'm actually gonna use my problem to help me. Cause I'm like, okay, 153, I don't know what that is. But if I look back at my problem, I see two factors right here of nine and 17. Well, 17 is prime, but nine is three times three. And then 12, that one's a lot easier, obviously. Three times four and four is two times two. So this becomes negative three times three times 17 and two times two times three. So I see that I only have a little bit in common. I just have one factor of three I can cancel. And then I multiply back out whatever is left. So in the numerator, I have a three times a 17. And it's negative, so negative 51. And then two times two is four. So negative 51 over four is the final answer as an improper fraction. If the problem wants you to change back to a mixed number, then you would have to do that extra step and go ahead and divide it out. So I'm just dividing here, doing my long division and I get 12 remainder three. So this becomes 12 that three becomes my numerator and the four stays the same. And don't forget you have a negative. So when I do conversions, I don't do the negative in the division here. I just tack it on at the end. Um, you don't wanna have to be subtracting with negatives and things like that in your long division. So that negative just gets tacked on. And my final answer here is 12 and three, negative 12 and three fourths. And you can see that that is nothing like two times five, which is 10. So I don't really have a shortcut here for you to multiply. Uh, with mixed numbers have to convert to improper fractions. So we can use all the same techniques, but make sure you do that conversion to improper fractions first, um, or you're gonna get the wrong answer. All right, let's do a couple more examples here still with multiplying. So here I'm mixing up a little bit. I'm bringing in some variables, obviously, and I don't have any numbers here. So we're just gonna work this out. Now I'm gonna actually rewrite this. So I multiply straight across. So I have two X's and I have four Y's. 
on the bottom, I just have a Y and an X. And I can still cancel in common here. So I have a pair of X's in common. And I also have a pair of Y's in common. So in this case, my whole denominator cancels out, which is fine. So if your whole thing cancels out, you technically have a one there. So I would have a one on the denominator. And then in the numerator, I have an X and I have three Y's. So Y to the third. Now dividing by one doesn't change the problem. So I actually can rewrite this as X Y cubed. Now, if I have an exponent, I can still go ahead and use my multiplication rules here because exponents are just a way for us to multiply that same value over and over again. So one third to the fourth power means I'm gonna take that entire one third and multiply it out four times. And again, notice here that my one third is in parentheses. So the whole thing is getting multiplied four times. And now I can multiply it straight across. One times one times one times one is just one. Here, three times three is nine, times three is 27, times three is 81. So I can also apply this with my fractions. You do wanna be careful. If the problem was written like this, that is not the same thing. I don't have parentheses here. So in this case, that four is only going with the one. So that's one times one times one times one. And in this case, that three is staying. So you do wanna be careful if your fraction is in parentheses, then the whole thing gets multiplied out when you're doing exponents. Okay. And let's just do one more here like this. So one in four fifths squared. Again, the whole thing is in parentheses, so the whole thing is getting multiplied out. So this problem means one and four fifths times one and four fifths. And again, if you see a mixed number when we're multiplying, you do need to convert to an improper fraction. So here I have five times one is five and plus four is nine. So this becomes nine fifths. And then here, one times five is five. Again, plus four is also nine. So nine fifths times nine fifths, multiplying straight across gives me 81 over 25. Now, if I think about simplifying this, um, 25 is just five times five for the prime factorization there. 81 is nine times nine. And each of those nines is just three times three. So if I go through the prime factorization, and I encourage you to do this on your own, so try it at home, um, you're gonna see that the 81 breaks down into just factors of threes, and the 25 breaks down into factors of fives, and nothing's going to be able to be simplified there. So 81 over 25 is gonna be my final answer. Uh, but again, you should always check and make sure that there are no factors. You should always simplify our final answer, and you wanna do that whether the problem says to or not. Um, the only time you would not is if the problem specifically said do not simplify, uh, but otherwise, you should always be simplifying your final answers at this point. If you need to convert this back to a mixed number, we can do that. We're going to go through our division process here. Now, 25 is a little bit harder. 25 times 1 is 25. 25 times 2 would be 50. 25 times 3 would be 75. And 25 times 4 would be 100. So it goes into 81 three times, which is 75. and I have a remainder of six. So another way to write this would be three and six out of 25. Now, a nice thing here as well is that if you know one of your fractions is simplified, your improper fraction or your mixed number, then the other one is also simplified. So because I know 81 over 25 is in its lowest terms form, I don't have to check six and 25. It's also gonna be simplified as well. So that's kind of nice. If you're not sure, you can just check one of the forms and you know the other form will also be simplified there.
let's do a little bit of practice with evaluating here. So I have my value for X and Y, and I have my expression X, Y. So what I'm going to do is just replace each of these. Now remember, X, Y means X times Y. If there's no symbol in between, it always means multiplication. So my X value here is 4 fifths, and my Y value here is negative 2 fifths. And now we can multiply straight across. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, and 5 times 5 is 25. You do want to make sure this is in lowest terms. So if you need to do out your prime factorization tree for each one, please do that. So do whatever you need to do to check that you are in simplest form. Um, if I think about 8, though, 8 is just going to be 4 times 2, and 4 is 2 times 2. So I just see all factors of 2s there, whereas 25 is just 5 times 5. So if I break down into the prime factorization tree, I'm not going to have anything common. Um, but I do encourage you to check that at home and make sure you're sure that you're in simplest form before you enter your answers. Um, if you are not, then you're going to end up with the wrong problem or the wrong answer. So it'll end up getting marked wrong there. All right, so there's one more thing here with multiplying before we move on that I want to show you. Hopefully that was a lot of examples so you can kind of have some good practice there. So typically when we multiply, and again, this strategy always works, you multiply straight across and then you just simplify. Um, it is actually possible to simplify before you multiply. Um, and again, this only works for multiplying fractions. This does not work for adding, subtracting, or dividing. You have to be in a multiplying form for this to work. So if you find this too confusing, then you don't have to use it. This is sort of just like a, a little tip or a trick here. So for instance, let's say I am multiplying two fifths um, times six fourths. To simplify first, we typically simplify diagonally. So for instance, you're going to look diagonally to see if there are any factors in common. Now notice here I have a two and a four. Those both have a factor of two in common. So what you can do is you can divide by two diagonally, one on top, one on bottom. So we can't do both bottom or both top. And then what happens is we have a factor of one left here and a factor of two left. And then you can multiply straight across. and check to make sure it is simplified. So sometimes we don't always get all the factors this way. Um, so now I multiply straight across. So I have one times six and five times two. So this gives me six over 10. Now I do have to be careful here, because I do see another factor of two that I missed. So three fifths is going to be my final answer. But simplifying first just kind of helps us to make things a little bit easier um in the end it doesn't take away all the simplifying but it can just help so let me do another example so let's say i have seven fifths times one over 21 and i want to simplify before i multiply so i'm going to look diagonally and i notice that i have a seven and a 21 here and both of those are divisible by seven they both have factors of seven so what I can do is I can cancel that out now. And then I have one times one left and five times three left, which is one over 15. Now here, I don't see any other factors in common. So this would be the final result. So it kind of just makes things a little bit easier. Instead of doing 21 times five and then re-breaking everything else back down into factors, uh, we're kind of getting rid of some of those larger factors early on. All right, let me do one more. All 
So maybe I'm multiplying 10 thirds times six over 70. So I noticed that this way, these both have a factor of 10 in common, right? 10 divided by 10 is one and 70 divided by 10 is seven. But I also see that this way, there is a factor of three in common. Three divided by three is one and six divided by three is two. So I'm left with here, one times two, one times seven, which is two over seven. Now, both of those are prime, so I can't break it down any further. And there is my answer. So you can see how this could be faster, right? If I did 10 times six, which is 60, and then three times 70 is 210, um, I have 60 over 210, which now I have to start factoring to break down to simplify. Um, so this little trick here can be helpful. If you see some obvious factors diagonally, you may want to cancel them first uh, before you move on. But you still want to double check because sometimes we don't get all the factors when we do this. So you still want to check at the end and make sure you haven't missed anything. Um, if you have mixed numbers, you still have to convert to improper fractions first. So you can't ever do anything with mixed numbers for multiplying. Always do the improper fraction first, and then you'll be able to kind of go ahead and jump in the rest of the techniques that we Okay, so now let's talk about dividing. And the reason I group them together is because division actually uses the multiplication rules. So first, just a quick definition. Two numbers are reciprocals of each other if their product is one. So for example, two thirds and three halves are reciprocals. Two thirds times three halves would get a six over six, which is just one. What you wanna to notice too, is that the fractions are flipped versions of each other. And this is really important. So if reciprocals, basically, you just have a flipped version of the fraction. So they multiply together to be one. As another example, if I did something like five and one fifth, those are also reciprocals. And the reason it works is because the number five, if you have a whole number, we can always divide it by one. So whole numbers can always be put over one um, to help us multiply. So we still get five over five, which is one. Okay, so like a little side note here. Let's say you had a problem that was a multiplication problem, six uh, times two thirds. Then what we can do is we can take that six and put it over one, and now we can go ahead and do our regular multiplying techniques here to get our final answer. So you can multiply straight across, you can simplify before you multiply whatever you wanna do. Um, but if you have whole numbers, we do put them over one and then it doesn't change the problem. Division by one doesn't affect anything. And it just allows us to stay more organized with our fractions. So what's gonna end up happening then is to divide fractions, we change to multiplication and take the reciprocal, i.e. flip, the second fraction. So if you have something like A over B divided by C over D, what we do is we keep the first fraction the same, we change to multiplication, and then we flip the second fraction. So this becomes multiplication. The first fraction stays the same, and the second one ends up getting flipped. 
And now what we do is we follow our regular multiplication rules at this point. Um, so that's kind of why I grouped everything together is because division is really nothing different. We're going to go ahead and change to multiplication here. And by flipping the second fraction, it actually works out. So we get the correct strategy for how we divide fractions. Uh, I'm not going to do a proof there for how that all works. It's kind of easy to see um, with pictures and things like that. Um, but just trust me that this is the easiest way for us to divide fractions here. All right, so let's say I have 4 over 15 divided by 1 third here. So my first fraction stays the same. I change to multiplication, and then it's always the second fraction that becomes the reciprocal um, or gets flipped. So be careful you don't mix that up. It's going to be the second fraction. And then now you're going to use your multiplication rules. So here you can multiply straight across. You can simplify before you multiply. It doesn't matter to me, whatever works for you. If I go straight across, I have four times three is 12 and 15 times one is 15. You do always wanna simplify though. So I do notice that I have a factor of three in common here. So my final answer is going to be four over five. I can also see that factor of three in common here. So if I wanted to simplify first, I could do that. Let's say I have negative two fifths divided by negative four thirds. So I have an improper fraction here, it doesn't matter. My first fraction stays the same. I change to multiplication and I always take the reciprocal or flip that second fraction. Now, negative times a negative is a positive. So my answer will be positive. And then if I multiply straight across, two times three is six, five times four is 20. I definitely see a factor of two, right? So I could have simplified that factor of two there um, and I'll do it here instead. I have three over 10. Now, if I try to break down three and 10, I don't have any prime factors in common. So that will be my final answer. All right, let's kick it up a little bit here. So I have a fraction here and I don't have a fraction here. So what I can do with a whole number or any, even if it's just a variable, I can always divide it by one. And it just helps me to stay more organized here. Um, okay, so that whole piece is going to go over one. Now I will notice here too that if you have a number times X, you can also put the X in the numerator. It's the same thing. I recommend that to keep it easier as you flip. So I'm gonna keep the first fraction the same. change the multiplication, and then I'm going to flip the second fraction. So that one goes up top and the four X squared is gonna go ahead on the bottom there. Now with variables, I think it's a little bit easier to just kind of multiply things out. So here I have six X times one. So six times one is six. So I have six X. Here seven times four is 28 and I still have the X squared. So now I'm gonna simplify. Uh, again, you can simplify first if you want to, but if you find it too confusing to try to work with X's and simplify before you multiply, then you don't have to. So what we can do is just break it down. So six is two times three. And 28 is four times seven and four is two times two. So I have two times three times X. And then here I have two times two times seven, and then X squared is X times X. So you wanna notice that I'm pretty comfortable switching back and forth between my strategies. On more simple problems, I tend to do what's quicker for me and just kind of use that division method instead to simplify. But on problems that are getting more complicated, I kind of like to slow down and write it out a little bit. So you can do whatever works for you. So I have a three up top here, 
And then here I have two times seven, which is 14 and the X. Okay, let's do an example with some mixed numbers. So let's say I have negative three and one third divided by negative two fifths. Actually, let's make this negative, uh, make this positive one and two fifths. Let's mix it up a little bit. So here I have a negative times a positive, which is going to be negative. So now my final answer is going to be negative. My first one stays the same, and I'm going to flip the second one. But I cannot flip anything until I change two improper fractions. Okay, this is really important. So I know students sometimes start flipping the two or if they make it five halves because they're in the mindset of flipping. Don't do that. You have to change to improper fractions first. So for the first one, it's going to be a negative. I have three times three is nine plus one is 10. So negative 10 thirds divided by, and then five times one is five plus two is seven, seven fifths. Now I have negative 10 thirds times, and now I can go ahead and flip that second fraction and make it five sevenths. 10 times five is 50, three times seven is 21, negative times a positive is negative. So if I want my answer as an improper fraction, um, this is actually gonna be simplified. So if you need to break it down further, you know, you can always go ahead and break down. So I have five times 10 here, and 10 is also two times five. And if I break down 21, I'm getting just three and seven, so I can kind of say I have no factors in common. So this is gonna be simplified. If I want it as a mixed number, then I'm going to have to go ahead and do my division here. It is going to stay negative. So 21 times 2 is 42. So that's actually going to be the best that I can do here. I have a remainder of 8. So negative 2 and 8 over 21 is also the way that we can write this. All right, I'm gonna do another example there. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and change to improper fractions. So 5 times 3 is 15 plus 1 is 16. So this becomes 16 over 5. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2 is 8. So 8 thirds. Once I've done that, now I'll go ahead and follow my regular rules, change over. That second fraction gets flipped or the reciprocal. I am going to simplify first because I do see I have a factor of eight in common. That's a pretty big number that I don't really want to have to worry about multiplying. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify first this time. So I have a two times three, which is six left. And then here I have five times one, which is five. So I have six fifths. Or if I want to go ahead and change this over, let's see, it goes in one time with a remainder of one. So I have one and one as my final answer. We can also apply these rules to our evaluating strategies. So here I have an expression, x divided by y, and I'm going to let x equal negative one-third and y equal negative five-sixths. 
So substituting this in, I actually have the problem negative one third divided by negative five six. And I don't have any mixed numbers here, so I can just jump right in. This is the one that gets flipped. Now I'm just gonna put the negative out front. You don't have to flip the negative or anything like that. Here, negative times a negative is a positive. I'm gonna choose to multiply straight across here. I get six over 15. And then I am noticing that I do have a factor of three in common. So I have two fifths for my final result here. Okay. All right, let's do another example. All right, so now I'm bringing in both multiplication and division, um, but we can still do it. So I'm going to follow the order of operations and do the parentheses first. So I'm going to multiply it here first. Um, I do see that I can simplify. So I am going to go ahead and simplify first here. So I end up with dividing both of those by four, I get one times three, which is three, and then seven times two, which is 14. Even if you multiplied across first, I would still then simplify that part before I brought it down. It's just going to make the rest of your work much easier. Now I have three over 14, this changes to multiplication and this second fraction is going to get flipped. I can leave that negative where it is though. Here, I do notice going across here that my threes are gonna end up canceling out, right? Cause I can take out a factor of three from both of those. So one times negative four is negative four and then 14 times one is 14. Now, I do want to be careful because you're probably saying, well, you've been simplifying along the way, but that doesn't mean I haven't missed anything. And I do check this and I see that, wait, 4 and 14 are both even. So they do have a factor of 2 in common. So I get negative 2 over 7 as my final answer here. So again, we just want to be really careful and double check those final answers and make sure we haven't missed any um any fractions or any, you know, any factors that can be simplified as well. Okay, I just wanna do a couple other examples that are a little bit different in this section to kind of, you know, mix up multiplication and division. Um, and one example I wanna do as a reminder is a uh, equation one. So is negative two thirds a solution to the equation negative one half x is equal to one third. Now this is actually nothing new. We have done this before. All we need to do is plug in that negative two thirds or x and see if we get a true statement. And we use all the same techniques. So what you wanna remember in math is that, on the C's here, um, Everything builds. So we, not, we should not be going against anything we've already learned. We should be able to build on it. So if we already know how to check solutions, we're gonna use the same technique here just with fractions. So I plug in negative two thirds for X. Now I'm gonna simplify first. So I'm gonna worry about this left side and I see multiplication. So I'm just gonna multiply straight across. Uh, one times two is two and two times three is six. So we're looking to check here, right? And negative and negative is a positive. So is two thirds equal to one third? Well, a couple ways I can check this. I could use cross products to check this, but I could also just simplify. If I simplify that left side of the equation, I do get one third here. So one third is equal to one third. This is true. Uh, so yes, X equals negative two thirds is a solution. Okay, so let's do one last example here. Um, let's say,
A class has 72 students. And I know that two ninths of those students are math majors. How many students are math majors? Okay. So I see that in total, I have 72 students and two ninths of those students are math majors. Now there is a key word here. We haven't seen it too much yet, but it's that word of. We use of a lot to mean multiplication, particularly with fractions, decimals, and percents. So if you see a fraction of a number, a percent of a number, then we're multiplying here. So this actually says to take two ninths and multiply it by that total of 72. Now, if I have a whole number, I can put that over one just to kind of keep it nice and even. I am going to simplify here first to make my life a little bit easier. I can divide both of these by nine and that gives me eight. So I have two times eight, which is 16 and one times one, which is one. And 16 divided by one is 16. So 16 students are math majors. And let's do one final example, uh, another word problem, just to kind of do some practice there. Okay. All right, so in a manufacturing process, a machine cuts strips one and three fifths inches long. from a piece of metal. How many strips can be cut from a 48 inch piece of metal? So we have here in a manufacturing process, a machine cut strips that are one and three fifth inches long. Um, so we want to know how many strips, sorry, strips uh, can we cut from a 48 piece of metal? So you have a very long four foot piece of metal. We want to just cut all these strips in it. So we don't know how many pieces that we can cut. So we're taking a hole and we're breaking it into equal parts. So if we have a hole that we're breaking into equal parts, that is division. So we're taking this 48 inch item and we're dividing it by pieces that are one and three fifths inches long. Now for division, we do have to change over to uh, improper fractions here. So that 48, we can leave as 48 and just put it over one, but I do need to change this over. So five times one is five plus three is eight. So this becomes eight fifths. Now I can change to multiplication and I can go ahead and flip that second fraction. And this is a good one where we may wanna simplify first because I can divide these both by eight. I get six there. So I have six times five over one times one, 30 over one, which is 30. So we can cut 30 strips. Okay, so remember, think about your keywords here. Think about your ideas. So here we're taking a whole and we're cutting it into pieces. They're equal pieces, so we're dividing it up. Um, if the topic doesn't make sense, think about something that does make sense to you. So maybe we're not doing metal here. Uh, maybe if you're into woodworking, you're thinking about a piece of wood and you're cutting the wood. Or maybe if you're into jewelry making, you're thinking about string and you're making necklaces that are all 
the same length long, right? We're taking that long string and we're cutting it, we're dividing it up. So we have that same process here, um, even if we change out the idea of a metal sheet to something else.